Greetings everyone and welcome to our first class video about surface area and volume. In this first video we're going to look at the surface area and volume of prisms. Our learning goal is that you'll be able to calculate the lateral and total surface areas as well as the volume of a prism. Okay, so since this is our first video about surface area, let's just take a moment to talk about what it is. Well, it's pretty straightforward. It's the area on the surface, rather obviously. But what do we mean by that? It's the area that's exposed to the outside. So if I take the area of all of the different faces, all the surfaces of the prism there, then I would have the total surface area. Okay? That's the first kind of surface area. The second kind is the lateral surface area, which is talking only about the sides, but not including the bases. The total surface area, which is all of the faces, is generally abbreviated, or I use the abbreviation SA. The lateral area, I'll use the abbreviation LA. So, where are the bases on this hexagonal prism, anyway? Well, we got two of them, since it's a prism. Recall that a prism has two bases that are both congruent and parallel. Those hexagons there are congruent shapes that are parallel to each other, so those could be counted as the bases. Okay, so the other faces are lateral faces, such as the top face, like that. Also including those two sides and the ones around the back that I can't shade in or it would confuse you. So we have six lateral faces and then two bases. Okay, so how do we calculate surface area? So let's take a rectangular prism here and one way to get the surface area is to add the areas of all the faces. This specifically is my favorite air type of calculation when it comes to simple shapes like a rectangular prism. If you get more complicated shapes, then the formula is more useful. But let's just add the areas of all the different shapes. When there's just squares and rectangles, I can calculate those pretty easily. The area of the square there is 25 square centimeters because its base and height are both 5. The other square which has to be congruent to it, because it's on the opposite side of the prism, is has an area also of 25. Then, what about the rectangles? Well, those have dimensions 25 by 5, so the area of each one of those would be 125. To get the total surface area, I just need to add it all up, so that would be a 550. And don't forget your units, centimeters squared. That would be the total surface area, because we added the area of all of the faces. The other method is to use a formula. The formula for the lateral area of a prism is pH, where P stands for the perimeter of the base, and H stands for the height of the prism. Okay, I want to take just a moment and show you where this formula came from. It actually comes from the method that we just did, which is adding the area of all of the faces. Okay, so for this example, we're going to treat that shaded part there as the base. On a rectangular prism, you can actually choose multiple different sides as the bases because they're each, each side has a another face that is parallel and congruent to it. So, with a rectangular prism, you have to be kind of told what the base is if you're finding a lateral area. I'll talk more about that in class. So for now, we're just going to use that as the base. Okay, that means that the sides that are around it, the longer rectangles, are the lateral faces. Okay, so where is P? It's right there. That's the perimeter of the base. Now. Notice it's also here. It's the total distance around that square. Now, if I unfolded that prism into its net, that perimeter of the square also has to match up with the length of that rectangle. Okay? With all of those, the little sides of the longer rectangle faces, if that makes sense. I'll show you in 3D in class. That way you can understand it a little better. Okay, 
but when that when we fold it out, all of those sides together represent the perimeter of the base. Where's the height? The height of the prism is here. Notice that it does not have to be straight up and down. It depends on how you draw the prism. And it mostly depends on where the bases are, because that's the distance between the bases. That's what we mean by the height of the prism. On the net, it's here. Okay. Notice that all of those longer rectangles in the net, they form a, rect a lo much larger rectangle. If I multiply P, which is one side, by H, which is the other side, I get the entire area of that rectangle. That's the, all of the lateral faces. That's the lateral area of the prism. Okay, so for the total surface area, the formula is pH plus 2B. We're adding the two of the areas of the bases. The reason why I hope should be obvious. Here's B, the area of the base. On the net, we have two bases, so we have to add two additional areas. They both have the same area, so it's just two times the area of one base. Okay, let's plug in some numbers. The perimeter of the base here is 20, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, and the height is 25. If we multiply those, that would mean the lateral area of this prism is 500 square centimeters. To get the total surface area, I just need to add two of the areas of the bases. The area of the base is 25, so that would be 50, so I would get a total of 550 square centimeters. That's the same answer we got using the other method. That's just a verification that both methods are equally valid. Okay, but what about volume? So volume is the amount of 3D space that is occupied by the object. Or if it was hollow, then you could say it's the amount of stuff that could fit inside the object. 3D stuff. Okay, if I asked you what the formula for the volume of this prism is, some of you might tell me that it's length times width times height. But I want you to know that that only applies to a rectangular prism. If it's any other figure, that formula will lead you astray. Instead, you need this one. Okay, it's the area of the base times the height. Now, for a rectangle, the area of the base is just length times width, so you see where that length times width times height comes from. So, here, we already know what the area of the base and the height are, so we can just plug them in. The area of the base is 25 square centimeters, so it's 5 times 5. Then we multiply by the height, which is 25 centimeters. That would give us 625. What would the units be? Well, we have centimeters squared times another centimeters, so that would be centimeters cubed. The, area, the units for surface area are squared, the units for volume are cubed. Okay, so let's look at one more example to help make sure you guys get it. Let's find the lateral and total surface areas as well as the volume of this prism. If you think you could do it, try doing it before I do it. That way you can see if you understand it well. Okay, so here we go. One thing I like to do as I solve these kind of questions is write P equals H equals and B equals out to the side. That helps keep me organized. And those are the three variables that I'll need for the formulas that I'm going to use. First, where is the base? For this triangular prism, well, I need to look for what we have two of. There's two bases that are both congruent and parallel. On a prism, that means this is the face that is not a rectangle. That's just a shortcut for figuring it out. Unless, of course, it's a rectangular prism, and that's, then you can use any of the faces as the base. But we'll talk about more about that later. So, on the triangular prism, the face that's not a rectangle is the triangle there. Okay, so that being the base, then P is the perimeter of the base, so that would be 12 plus 8 plus 8, which is 28. Okay, now what about the height? 
the height is the distance between the bases. So between the two triangles is a distance of 4. So the height is 4. Notice again that the height does not have to be straight up and down. Okay, now we need to find the area of the base. The formula for the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. I already know that the base of that triangle is 12. But what about the height? That's right there. Notice, this is very important, there are two different heights that we're talking about. One is the height of the prism, that's in red, that's 4. Then there's also the height of the triangle, which is in yellow. Okay, so we got two different heights going on. Make sure you don't confuse them. How would I find the height of that triangle? Well, because that height splits the triangle in half, the base would be 6 and 6, so I could use the Pythagorean theorem. I'll let you guys figure, you know, work that out. We've done plenty of Pythagorean theorem in class. The final answer for H is 5.292. So, I'll plug that in for the height, and I get an area of the base that's 31.749. Alright, so now we just need to plug it into the lateral and total surface area formulas. So, the lateral area is perimeter of the base times height, so that would be 28 times 4. That's 112. Since our, there are no units given, I'm going to put units squared, just un squared. To get the total surface area, I need to add two of the areas of the bases. So I'm going to add 2 times 31.749, and I'll get 175.489 units squared. Okay, so those are my two surface areas. What about the volume? That's the area of the base times the height. So I've already got those numbers, 31.749 times 4 and I get 126.996 and my units are units cubed this time okay so I think that's it if you have any questions write them off to the side on your notes that way you can ask them to me in class alright I'll see you guys later